Hello everybody. Uh, welcome to Daisy Case Primitives. My name is Christy and this is where I talk about cross stitch and decorating and other crafts that I enjoy. Welcome. Um, today I've got FFOs, whips, happy mail, some decorating, tchotchkes, stash, I mean haul, um, stitching bucket list and question of the day and who knows what else we may get into. So welcome everyone. Um, I want to say thanks to everyone that watched and commented on my last, uh, short video of my summer patriotic Americana decorating video short. I enjoyed putting that together and sharing that with you all. So thank you for watching and commenting. I guess we'll get into FFOs. Um, last time, last regular video, I was working on this little piece. This is uh, a freebie from Sampler and Santa's blog. And I stitched this on 32 count white Zweigar. I don't remember what thread that was now. I think I, I give that information on my last regular video, but I completed this and uh, coffee dyed it after stitching and then backed it with this fabric. And so now I have completed three, three little pillows, little red work pillows, and I display them in my set of old bowls. I think they look really cute together and I set them on a, an old ladder back chair in my dining room and they, was, they just really look sweet together. So that's my FFO. Um, I'll have, I wanna share my Miriam Dowd finish. Um, Primitive Things, Linda Gillen, um, that's been on, what, on my past videos, uh, my progress and my, my finished stitching on that. Uh, I found a um, a board from Hobby Lobby and I got that for 40% off, something like that, and uh, mounted it old style. I wanted it to look like it was old, roughly finished, and uh, I found some old um, upholstery tacks and I just kind of folded the edges under and tacked it to the board. And, um, I don't know if I can get photos put in here in this, in this segment right now, but if not, uh, watch at the end and I will have, uh, photos of that finish and where I have that hanging. So that was a fully finish. I was glad to get that done. And she's on the wall where I intended her to go and she works out just well there. And I'm really pleased with that finish. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to show you is this little cutie. Um, this is from, this is called America the Beautiful, and the design is by, um, Gettysburg Homestead, and you can find it on Etsy. Um, Mary has an Etsy shop, and she does really great um, primitive design cross stitch. She has a few uh, patterns on her site. She also does uh, painted paper mache and she does a wonderful job with all of that. Um, so I will uh, post a link below to her Etsy shop, but um, this piece I stitch on 32 count white Zweigart uh, with the called for uh, DMC and um, coffee dyed it afterwards and I just wanted some kind of a different finish so a sweet friend sent me this um, patriotic star fabric which was just perfect with the colors on the stitch and um, I took the piece and just frayed the edges off. I picked off some of the lower or the loose ends to the edges of the fabric. I think you can kind of see that. You may see it better down here. 
So I frayed the edges and um, I wanted to use this fabric, so I just pinned it. I have what some pens that they look like they're rusty, but they're really not. They're just kind of a dark brown paint on them, um, made to look like they're rusty. But I just I just pinned this onto the backing fabric and just laid it in the frame with the the glass and the backing board. It holds it in there nicely. So this is just a thrift store frame that I got cheap and painted it and distressed it. And I love how this turned out. Okay, now let's talk about Happy Mail. Um, I, I never win anything in my life. <laughs> uh, but in the past month, I've won two giveaways. Uh, one from um, Created to Create BH. I think I talked about it on my last regular video. Um, and posted a link to uh, Betty's floss tube, but I will do it again this time. But I wanted to share what, what her giveaway was. And it included this sweet little bag. So cute. Very nicely made. Cute fabric. So she included that. And also a Erica Michaels All About Berries Club Give More a Quaker Wisdom Berry. And it's just such a cute little berry. I have never made a strawberry, but I'm gonna have to now. Now I have everything. It's fully kitted with fabric, floss, and all the finishing pieces. So I'm looking forward to trying this and uh, trying my hand at finishing a berry. So thank you very much, Betty. Uh, I I'm, I'm just really pleased. Thank you so much. Okay, now the second happy mail is from Megan, the wide-eyed stitcher. She also has a floss tube channel, and she had a giveaway that I won, this awesome, beautiful bag that she made. Here's the inside, nicely made, so cute. And you guys, I couldn't believe all the goodies that were in here. Um, so let's just take them out and we'll go through them. So on top of the, the sweet little bag, she, I won this pattern chart, the Good Housewife Thankful Wheeler. I love Let's take that out of there so you can see it better. I love the Good Housewife. And this pattern is just really cute. So that's that will be a bucket bucket list stitch. So that was part of it. Get that back in there so I don't lose everything. And then she included little baggy. Her favorite color of floss is blue. She likes blue samplers. So she included this little bouquet of all DMC different colored blue flosses. That was awesome. And she included these floss drops that she made herself with the ring. And there's a bunch on there. And she included some needles. And also a really sweet, very sweet card. And let's see. She included this little item, which is from its charm school. This is a thread tail, I mean, a tail threader. Like this 
wire opens up like you would run this under your stitches when you're all done finished stitching something you would run this little wire under the stitches and then this little wire piece spreads apart and you would stick the tail of your thread in between there and then just pull it through underneath all of your other stitches that will come in very handy miss megan because I like to play thread chicken. It is a little, looks like a little mushroom. That'll be handy. Thank you so much. And this little rug, mug rug that she crocheted herself, which I'm going to sit beside my stitchy spot and put my scissors on that's so pretty it's really a pretty color eggplant color yarn she made that and included that and you guys this this was the topper for me this little needle book she made from a Stacy Nash design so this is the front of the book this is the back this little per mother of pearl button and open it up and it's a little needle book and it is just darling it is so sweet and so it's just so sweet i just couldn't believe all the things that she included in her giveaway so megan bless your heart thank you so much i love everything and uh, I just want you to know I appreciate you and I love your videos and I always enjoy watching you. So, so that was awesome. Happy meal. Thank you both ladies. That's uh, so generous of you all to uh, offer such great video or uh, great giveaway items. My whips. On, my, on the weekends, I'm working on Mary Bar Sampler. You've seen this. Hopefully you're not getting totally bored with it. I'm using 36 count light mocha linen, which I love. I really love stitching on this. It may, it's so easy, so pleasant to stitch on. Um, that's everything I have finished so far. This is a really big piece. Uh, let's see. I finished up, get this over here. I finished, I always have a hard time with this. I finished this motif. I finished or started and finished this one. I got the outline around the, where her name will go. And now I'm starting on the motif above it. There's a little, uh, I think there's a little chair that's going to sit in there, but it's coming along. Even though it's so large, um, I kind of just stitch one page at a time. I feel like I'm getting good progress. It may not look like it, but it, it feels like it because each little motif you, you uh, complete, it makes you feel like you're really accomplishing something. I worked on Little Birds by Blackbird Designs. I did get some more time in on them. And this is the pattern. Here is my progress on Little Birds. Let's see if I can get this all in there. I, let's see, what did I do this time? I worked across the top of this border. Uh, I brought this band on down some more. And let's see, what else did I do? I think I worked on a new motif here and got that one done. And I brought this band over a little bit more too, so. Next one, um, I worked on Flag Folk by Not Forgotten Farm. Get this 
this one. I'm stitching this on R&R's uh, &R 18th century rook fabric. And I took this one with me to um, Stitch Group the first of the month. And I got all of this finished by Faux. Got some more of this little border around it completed. Anyway, here we are now. So that's my progress. I really like it on this, this fabric. It looks really, really nice. Will I have it finished by 4th of July? I don't know. We'll see. Next one that I worked on was Francis Poole by Brenda Gervais with my needle and thread. This is a reproduction sampler. This was my April birthday start. And I really like this. I'm working this one on 36 count. Get in there. 36 count flax, Swigert flax with the called fours. And this is where I am now. I finished up this bird. Get this little bitty motif done and starting on the center flower and i don't think let's see i worked on getting all the the flower flower buds finished so got that done i really enjoy this fabric also it's such a it's just easy to see the holes uh easy to stitch on and uh, i really like this red I think that's Red Rocks, and let's see, Red Rocks, Weeks Red Rocks, and Gentle Arts Old Red Paint, and the Old Red Paint is kind of a darker, rusty red. I really like that. I think that would look cute on another... Um, small red work pillow. Sarah Ann Biggins. This is from the Antique and Needlework quarterly CD. Number 11 autumn issue. And I'm stitching this one on 36 count graham cracker fabric from Kitten Stitcher. It is um, what her son dyes. I really like it. Love the color. Got threads hanging everywhere. And this is my progress here. I finished up, worked some more, a little bit on this motif. And hmm, I think this one was done. Maybe not. And then now I'm starting to work on the big house in the center. And got reproduction sampler by Needlework Press. This was, I think, an exclusive uh, sold at the Attic Needlework Shop. Needlework Press. I'm stitching this one on, <laughs> yeah, 36 count baked clay by Fox and Rabbit. And um, I'm using, I changed out some of the um, lighter colored flosses for darker, um, darker ones. Um, and I'm kind of following what um, Emily, Eclectic Possessions, her what she's suggested, what she's choosing. That's the width of it. And what I got done this time was, uh, let's see. I think I worked the border on down. I worked a little bit more on this. And I think I've got, no, just on this side, I think so. This is really pretty. So, 
All right, so that's that's all my whips. Um, quite a few, which is um, I'm enjoying the pro the progress that I've made on those. Um, the question that I want to ask you today is: When you're stitching samplers, do you stitch the complete border? Do you do it all first? Um, or do you kind of stitch a little bit, a little bit of the border and then go off to the middle and do other things? Or just how do you, how do you approach and attack the stitching of the sampler borders? I'm just curious. Uh, I have never, I think I can say never. Uh, I have never really fully completed an entire border before I went on to stitch anything inside or anything on the border, like flowers or leaves or anything. Um, I, I get too bored with that and I want to get to the good stuff, the fun stuff. I want to see more color. So I generally will start in the top right hand corner and work my way to the left and down. So that's how I like to approach it. But, um, I don't know. I've, with the little birds, I could see, I can see the advantages to stitching the complete border first, um, uh, because it would get, you would know at least your framework, your foundation would be solid and, and correct and accurate. And then you could just count off of your border. But um, I can also see how starting the border and then moving on into the interior can kind of help give you a motif or other um, de designs in the pattern to count off of. So I'm just curious what everybody likes to do. I know it's just personal preference, but I'm just interested in what others, what are what, what you guys like to do. So uh, that's the question of the day. I also have another question. Um, in September, the um, shop, quilt shop, quilter station in Lee Summit, Missouri is hosting a retreat. Um, and the retreat will be held at uh, Drury Inn in Independence, Missouri. And um, that's just a hop, skip, and a jump from my home. And I am going to that retreat. So if you're going, uh, leave me a comment and uh, let me know. And uh, I'm looking forward to meeting so many people and uh, fangirling on many, many. And uh, just uh, enjoying my time. I have never been to retreat, so I really do not know what to expect. And I'm just thinking, you know, I'm not going to expect anything but just enjoying myself. But I do want to go uh, being prepared, and I don't know, I don't, we don't know yet, I don't think anybody has released yet the kits that will be in the, cla uh, the classes. Um, so I don't really know what to expect, and I don't really know what things I would need to take. Of course, I know any of my magnification, a light if I want it scissor, seam ripper, um, you know, just the basics, obviously, that I would need for stitching, which I probably won't do a whole lot of, but, um, uh, I just don't really know what to expect, and I don't know what I may not be thinking of to take. So, if you've ever gone to a retreat, uh, let me know that in the comments, and tell me, share with me, Maybe uh, an item that you would not typically think of to take with you to a retreat. And um, we'll see what everybody has to say about that. So I'm looking forward to answering those two questions. All right. Um, let me see. I guess we will go to... Let's do my stitching bucket list item beauty. This is Eliza Mitchell from Lottie Da. I think I shared this as a purchase a few videos back. This is on my bucket list. And I have pulled out, I have pulled the fabric. What is this? 
36 count rustic drab by XJU Designs. And this is what that looks like. So that's, that's what that will look like. And I think that will be a pretty, pretty combination. So another stitching bucket list item, Eliza Mitchell by Lottie Da.